I was thinking the other day, why is it that politicians always kick the can down the road? They're always doing that. They say, why solve a problem today when we can solve it tomorrow? Why not? It reminds me of a great quote in the movie Charlie Wilson's War with Tom Hanks. He's asked, why is Congress talking a lot but doing nothing? And his response is, well, it's tradition mostly. And so I think part of this kicking the can down the road is it, it's tradition mostly. On a more serious note, I think there are two main reasons why politicians like to kick the can down the road. The first reason is that we are facing a lot of tough problems in America right now. Social Security, entitlements, other entitlement programs will eventually go bankrupt. All those trust funds will run out 20, 30, 40 years from now. And the truth is that most politicians don't really know how to fix these problems. Most politicians are career politicians. They're lawyers. They're not academics. They're not scientists. They don't really know how to solve problems. And they do not have a history of solving problems. They're politicians through and through. The only thing they know is how to make deals, get reelected, and bullshit through a conversation. They don't know how to solve complex problems. Because we have so many new people in Congress, we don't have really anyone that's an overstatement. There are very few members of Congress who were experienced legislators and who were in Congress back in the day when Congress used to actually do something and solve problems. Now, Congress has become more political than ever. It's been more political than ever over the last six to eight years. And I would say more than half of Congress is new. New in the sense that, as I said, they are not experienced legislators. They are not experienced at reaching answers. I think I read something recently that said more than 50% of the Senate or 60% of the senators have not been in office or were not in office before the year 2000. So in the last 14 years, we've had more than 50% turnover in the Senate. And after this year, when some older members retire, like Max Baucus, who, who just retired, we also see um, we had Herb Cole just retire. We have um, uh, Carl Levin retiring, Jay Rockefeller, Frank Lautenberg just died. So a lot of the oldies, Tom Harkin is leaving, a lot of the oldies who were in the Senate when we solved problems are not there anymore. And so this, that was a long answer to a short question. Well, you know, it's politics. I get paid to talk. A long answer to a short question. We are kicking the can down the road because a lot of politicians do not have the answers. These are very complex problems. They don't have the answers. They won't admit that they don't have the answers. And so it goes in a vicious cycle. The can gets kicked down the road. Another reason the can gets kicked down the road is because we do these short-term solutions to long-term problems. We have these uh, one-year stop gaps, these one-year dock fixes to really long-term things. And so it's hard to plan in the long-term when you're only thinking in the short-term. We need to think more in the long-term. Congress needs to act more in the long-term. That's another reason. A third reason is the big E, or really RE, re-election. If you're a member of Congress, you think to yourself, if I try to solve a problem today, odds are my solution will probably be divisive. It's probably very partisan. If I'm running for re-election, my primary electorate, my general election electorate are two very different electorates, and I have to cater to both at different points in my campaign. Why present a solution that is going to divide people and hamper my chances of re-election? For instance, Medicare. Paul Ryan put out a plan. I'm not going to talk about whether it's good or it's bad. He put out a plan to reform Medicare. Now, 
his plan would reform Medicare for the long-term future, long-term future. But it's a very divisive plan. Members of Congress see that he put out this plan. He got vilified by Democrats. He got vilified by some people in his own party. They're thinking to themselves, why should I put myself through this? It does not make sense in a re-election uh, perspective. And the final reason is the average age of members of Congress. There is no impetus for them to solve these problems because many members are in their late 50s, 60s, 70s, even some in their 80s. 30, 40 years from now, when Social Security goes broke, when Medicare goes broke, when every other entitlement program goes broke, half the members of Congress will either be deceased or in nursing homes on their way out. And so there's no push for them to hurry up and solve these problems because they figure, eh, that ain't my problem. I'm not going to be here when the thing goes when the thing goes broke. And so there, there's no rush for them to do anything because they'll be dead. You know, let's be honest. And so the people like you and me are the real losers. The people who are in their teens, 20s, and 30s now are going to be the real losers and we're going to say 30 years from now, why are they always kicking the can down the road? Because tradition mostly, re-election, and age are the answers, but they are not the answers that we're looking for. They are something to ponder.